Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing key technical details that AMD have officially provided for Zen 3, Milan, and even some insight into Zen 4. In fact, it's startling the sheer amount of detail that AMD have provided at the HPC Advisory Tech Conference, which was recently hosted in the United Kingdom. So, as a quick reminder, Zen 2 is currently found in Ryzen 3000 CPUs and also the second generation of Epic CPUs known as Rome, and will soon be coming to the third generation Threadripper processors as well, which will launch in November. Zen 2 has numerous architectural changes, which we've detailed before several times on the channel, and the main thing about it, though, is it has been backwardsly compatible with older generations. So, for example, if you have an X370 motherboard, you can plonk a Ryzen 3000 CPU in it, and so on and so on. So, there have been some details in the past that AMD have provided for Zen 3. One of those is the backwards compatibility will be maintained, and this will be the case up until Zen 3. So Ryzen 4000, at least in theory, should work on an X370 motherboard, and similarly, if you have uh, adopted your data center for the first generation of Epic, you should be able to plonk in Milan into, that, into your data center. So basically, what we did know is it was using the 7nm plus process from TSMC, which is very similar to the original 7nm, but does use EUV for some of its layers during manufacturing, and furthermore has around 10 to 15 percent improvement in power, uh, area, size, and uh, performance compared to 7nm vanilla. Some of those details were provided via uh, Forrest Norad during interviews. But these details go much, much further than what we already knew. Uh, this is, by the way, also an article, so if you want to go ahead and check it out, you can find it, of course, linked in the video description if you prefer the written word. So let's start things out with things we kind of knew but are just reconfirmed here. For one, the TDP of this range of processors, Milan, is identical to what we have with Rome. We also have support for PCIe 4 as well as PCIe 3. And we also, of course, have a SOC-based architecture, DDR4 support, and so on and so on. But this is where things get super duper interesting. For one, you will notice that it does specifically state that it has 64 cores. So the core count here remains identical between Rome and Milan. So there doesn't look to be additional processor cores, at least according to this document. Furthermore, you'll notice a times 2 right next to it. Now, I must admit, at the very moment I looked at this, because it was quite late at night, it was quite late uh, last night, UK time, that this, uh, that this popped up. That's why I didn't cover it uh, when it first emerged. I was like, oh, is that a reference to the number of sockets, so CPU slash sockets, or does that actually represent the number of threads, in other words, SMT? Well, you could see it right there in the bottom left-hand corner. It is actually a reference to SMT support. So, at least according to this document, we do not have SMT4 with the Zen 3 architecture, and it will remain at just SMT2. In a different portion of the discussion, though, there was also insight into the CCX changes. If you're unfamiliar with the Zen 2 architecture, it is comprised of chiplets. You have the I.O. die, which we're going to omit for the dis this discussion, along with a chiplet containing CPU cores, and then multiple of these chiplets come together to form a greater whole. For example, in the case of, let's say, the 3950X, you have two CPU chiplets along with the I.O. die. However, if you delve further into the chiplet, it is broken down into eight CPU cores along with level 3 cache, but those are clustered together in CCXs. So each CCX contains four CPU cores and 16 megabytes of level 3 cache. This was, that means the uh, amount of level 3 cache doubled compared to previous generations. There are some other fundamental changes as well to the architecture, but we've gone into those several times in the past, including fl uh, floating point performance, improvements to the branch predictor, and so on and so on. But it's kind of out the scope of this video, as I really want to focus on Zen 3. 
anyway. So what the differences are here is that the layout of the CC axis looks extremely different. In fact, it almost looks like the entire chiplet is essentially now just one CCX. So it's almost like it's being unified. So you have all of the uh, eight CPU cores, which are now able to access a, I guess you could say shared level three cache. Now what they have said is that we will get 32 megabytes at least for the next generation, but they've not specified the amount exactly. So I'm guessing it might either depend upon usage scenario, maybe yields or several other factors. They've said at least 32 megabytes of level three cache for the next generation uh, Zen free processors. And once again, it looks like all of those processors on that particular chiplet are able to access uh, that level three cache. And then of course, they also have their own private level two and level one caches. So for example, uh, the Zen 2 architecture had 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core. Who knows if that remains consistent? They've not specified the amount of level 2 cache or any of the other caches for the uh, Zen 3 architecture. So let's just say, uh, for the sake of this video, still 512 kilobytes. So there are several takeaways here. The first is the most obvious that SMT4 is not supported with Zen 3. It's going to be interesting to see whether that comes to a later generation of processors, let's say Zen 4. But for now, we can say that that rumor is not a thing unless AMD are deliberately not including it in this so that, well, their competitors don't know. Uh, I personally think that it's not going to be here anymore. I've actually spoken to several of my sources. Most of them have said that they're not certain. Uh, a couple of the more reputable ones have said that they don't think it is, and a couple of other sources have said, well, maybe, but it's possibly, potentially only for certain SKUs, most likely the higher end Epic CPUs, but they're not certain one way or the other. So I've recently been leaning towards, no, it doesn't. Uh, um, that is feature SMT4, and it's going to remain at SMT2. The other thing that we learn is because it does have 64 cores, it looks like we still only have nine dies on the uh, highest end SKUs for Epic. So that actually is different to what Charlie over at uh, Semi Accurate has said. Charlie over at Semi Accurate said that he said it could be up to 15 dies on the processor. And to be honest, his information is normally pretty darn good. So potentially either plans have changed and maybe it's for a future generation like Genoa, which we'll get to in a minute, or maybe the dies are for something else like high bandwidth memory. I'm not saying this is true. I'm just giving alternatives to make uh, his information and this information line up. Maybe GPU clusters, although I don't think that they're going to exist with only DDR4 without high bandwidth memory because of memory constraints. We'll get more to that in just a moment or potentially AMD is sandbagging and not providing an exact amount of information regarding what has changed with the next generation processors. And as always, all we can do is wait and see until either leaks occur or AMD officially confirm something. So getting back to the whole DDR4 thing, I'm kind of unsurprised that the core count remains identical if we don't have some form of high bandwidth memory or something else on board. Imagine, for, if you will, if you had an RX 5700 XT, but some joker decided instead to outfit it with like a 128-bit memory bus. Or you had an RTX 2080 Ti and someone said, ah, that's fine just having GDDR5 memory on a 192-bit bus. You wouldn't buy it if it still had the same number of CUDA cores, right? Because you and I both know it's going to be significantly constrained by memory bandwidth. Basically, CPU cores and clock frequency is great, but if you can't feed them, it doesn't matter the number of CPU cores you have. There are things you can do to improve uh, bandwidth efficiency, so caches, for example, great branch prediction, and so on and so on, but there is only a certain amount you can do. There's only a certain amount that you can tap the well. And yeah, no matter really what AMD do with the DDR4 specification, they can't just keep cranking up the core counts. That isn't to say that there aren't ways around it, once again, like uh, memory on die, but there hasn't been any official information regarding that and no solid leaks. So it's just possible that AMD have decided to remain consistent with the 64 cores. 
Something I thought of during the editing of this video was an article from Charlie over at Semi Accurate and also the Frontier Supercomputer that AMD are a partner on. We'll start things with Charlie over at Semi Accurate where he released an article in April 15th, 2019 titled AMD to Differentiate Cores. I'll read the first couple of sentences. It looks like AMD is going to split up their CPU designs once again. Semi-accurate's deep cover moles have started twittering, not on Twitter, just the noises about some of the changes in the master plan, end quote. And earlier this year, AMD also announced their involvement with Frontier. Frontier is expected to be the world's fastest supercomputer and will involve a collaborative effort between AMD, Cray, Oak Ridge, and the US Department of Energy. And they've basically said it's going to be an exascale endeavor and is going to be extremely powerful. Why AMD? AMD is proven provider of both processor and graphics technology, creating intelligent ecosystems that work efficiently. Four key AMD technologies will be leveraged. Epic, Radeon Instinct Accelerators, Infinity Fabric Technologies, and ROCM, Radeon Open Ecosystem, and Open software ecosystem for heterogeneous compute and then you can learn further about the uh, processors and hardware which is found in it although they've not given all of the details for epic processors they've said our epic processors are driving a new error in the data center and the frontier system will be utilizing a custom epic cpu optimized for high performance computing and ai computation furthermore amd released a official slide which said well basically the same thing High performance CPU customized for HPC, custom AMD Epic processors optimized for HPC and AI, utilizes future Zen cores, high performance architecture, and AI optimized for supercomputing workloads, and that's about it. Potentially, what we're going to have is a series of CPUs which will be designed specifically for the purposes of New Frontier, which will be based on the Zen 3 architecture. Potentially, therefore, that could be the reason that we're hearing rumours of 15 chiplets and SMT4. Maybe those are features which will be found in Frontier and other specific, specific customers by AMD. But at large, this will not be a feature which is found in the general, if you can call Epic uh, general, lineup of processors from the company. This is pure speculation on my part, but it's an interesting thought. The next generation though, Zen 4, is still currently being in the design phase. So they actually said during the conference that if you want additional features, now is actually a really good time to kind of pipe up and be like, hey, could you make this, uh, make my bed in the morning please? That would be pretty spiffy. Being serious for a moment though, they haven't actually outright said it supports DDR5, they've said it's next generation memory standards. But realistically, DDR5 is the only one that makes any sense. They've also said that it's uh, probably going to release in uh, 2022, which, once again, is kind of like the time frame we knew about anyway. They've also not given details regarding the core counts or changes to the actual architecture. That's probably because a lot of that stuff is still in flux. The only other possibility is that we could see some next generation high bandwidth memory type uh, actually outfitted on uh, Zen 4 or um, Ganoa, but that's just speculation on my part and certainly not confirmed yet. And I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if AMD themselves are still not 100% certain what products and what SKUs they're going to be providing. A very obvious thing that's missing, however, during the conference was discussion of exact performance details or other fundamental changes to the architecture. So, for example, we don't know what the clock frequency is compared to, let's say, Rome. We don't know uh, IPC gains. We don't know those type of details, which would actually provide a really good understanding of how it compares to older generations. There has been a lot of debate of whether Zen 3 is, well, Zen Plus again, but AMD have said that they don't want to do that, that they want each architectural jump to be just that. They don't want it to be incremental, they want it to be a significant leap. But obviously saying that and reality are two different things. Personally, I do think, however, it's going to be quite a big difference. Um, I think we're going to see higher clock speeds. One very unofficial piece of information 
uh, from someone that posted online. I believe it was on the Chip Hell forums, and the poster has been pretty accurate in the past. They said that the clock frequencies for the Zen 3 engineering sample chips are basically very close to what we're already getting, or better than what we're already getting with Zen 2's retail chips. But I don't know if I believe that until we actually get the product in our hands. Either way, though, I think that even just some changes to the level 3 cache and the layout could make some rather significant improvements for certain workloads. For example, let's say the 4700X, whatever it ends up being called, does retain an 8-core layout. Well, because it doesn't have that segmented uh, CCX design anymore, in theory anyway, it should provide a nice boost in performance for applications which are latent, latency sensitive for level 3 cache. One thing AMD have also said, although not in this conference, was that in terms of power consumption, TDP, that type of thing, it's going to be competitive to Intel's uh, Sunny Cove architecture. And that's another reason that I don't think AMD will want to just sit back on their butts, because they do know that Intel are waiting in the wings. They are working on Sunny Cove and all of the other architectures that succeed it, AMD are making significant gains at the moment in market share, particularly in the server market, which is extremely lucrative, but they need to continue the pressure on Intel. So it's kind of like, although AMD may have a technical advantage in many areas, they don't have a market share advantage. So for it, it's, them, it's their job right now to continue the pressure and continue to win customers over. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe and you can also once again check out the article linked in the video description along with our social media. But take care of yourselves. Bye for now.